Um, we're growing. We're growing at a massive rate. Um, we open in Townsville um, later this year, um, and we have a few studios in town in in um, uh, in Hobart in Tasmania as well. So we really are all over the country, not just the main parts, not just the main cities. Um, and yeah, I develop all of the, I I work on all of the um, student training, the onboarding, the curriculums and criteria for all of those courses, and then also the existing. Uh, for the existing trainers and um, for the existing network, I work on all of their ongoing development, upskilling and um, and retention, really. So that's my job in a nutshell. I have a big team of, of different managers, training managers, state training managers and academy tutors that work with me. Um, but yeah, we're pretty we're uh, pretty much all over the place. And there's lots of opportunities with with KX as Pilates instructors, especially even with former Pilates. Um, so I'm going to take you through a math class this morning. Obviously, that isn't really what KX does, to be honest. Like we are reformer, we do specialise in reformer, and it is like a fitness dynamic style of reformer Pilates, which is designed for the mainstream, for you know everyone on the street who wants to be fit, wants to be strong, can use Pilates as that. Trying to move away from the Pilates is for rehab, Pilates is for stretching, Pilates is for physio and all that kind of, all, all those kind of um, associations with it, which are obviously true, but it's, a, it's the path that we go down with it. It's trying to make it more accessible to everyone. Um, so any questions before I start? If anyone does have any injuries, because there's so many of you on a call, it's very, very hard for me to manage or modify for injuries. So I will say little pointers as we go through, but I've, um, but, I've, uh, but you'll have to um, modify for yourself. However, if you don't know how to modify for yourself and you have an injury or um, there's an exercise that doesn't really kind of sit well in your body, by all means, do take yourself off mute and ask, okay? Um, but it's hard because sometimes even your camera angles, I can't see you see you properly. But if you can try and make sure that your camera angles do kind of go down on your mat, um, uh, we will be doing standing and laying and laying exercises. I've just done this as a mat based ex as a mat based class because I didn't know what props any of you guys had. If you have bands or rings or dumbbells or anything like that, but by all means, if we're doing things and you've got a prop that you want to add to it, like we'll be doing bridges at some point. If you want to put a band around your legs because you've got one, do it. That's absolutely fine. If you want to add in some dumbbells to some of the squat work we do absolutely go for it okay if you've got that otherwise i'll be teaching all uh, without the prop and just basing it on the mat okay amazing and just to say guys definitely after we finish the class ask amy every question you've got um amy is the go-to person um to, to kind of know at kx um and about how you get job opportunities there so at the end of the session as well we'll definitely flick out to everyone kind of where you go to apply for the jobs um but yeah super super excited and thank you so much yeah amy for being with us this morning you're welcome you're welcome okay let's get into it um, we are going to start with some classic roll down. So I will do a mix of like classic kind of Pilates as well as classic kind of Joseph Pilates as well as more dynamic modern day, modern day exercises and interpretations as well. So just going to need to stand at the back end of your mat, be your distance apart. I think I've cut my head off for some of you. It's hard to get the angling in the room. Um, and we're just going to inhale and reach the arms up above and look up high. As you exhale, tuck through the chin, dive down through your arms, start to roll yourself down to the ground. You can bend your knees a little bit if you like. Let your head hang, keep your shoulders hang and release. Fairly tight. Big breath in. And as you exhale, lengthen through the back of the legs, curl through the spine and roll yourself back up to standing. Inhale, reach the arms up above. And let's do two more of those. Big breath in, exhale as you tuck the chin, try and really curl and unstack your spine as you roll down to the floor. Bending the knees is absolutely fine if you need it. Let the head hang, give it a little shake from left to right. Belly tight, and then inhale, exhale, start to roll back up. Try and articulate the spine, reach the arms up to the sky, looking up. One more of those, big breath in, exhale as you unstack. Roll down your spine, coming down towards the ground. Again, take another second to hang, let the head shake left to right, let the shoulders release. Big breath in, and as you exhale, squeeze through the stomach, 
So roll your spine back up nice and tall and stand in nice and tall. Good work. Bring the arms down by your side and we're going to do three heel raises. So you're going to rise to your toes and slowly lower the heels to the floor. Exhale, rise. Inhale, lower. Exhale, rise. Inhale, lower. Now as we take a squat, we're going to send the hips back and reach the arms up overhead and then stand tall and press the arms behind us. We've got a bit of a shoulder retraction exercise. Let's do another two. One more and back to those heel raises. Arms at the side, rise to the heels, slowly place them down. Practice control as you move through these movements. And then we go back into our squats. Three, arms go overhead as we squat. Two, retract the shoulders as we stand. And one, back to three heel raises. Three, two, one. Three squats, three, two. Big waves through those arms. We go for sets of five. Five heel raises. Four. Belly tight, head tall, nice tall spine. Two more. And five squats. Five. We've got one more set of these. Three. Two. And one. Five heel raises, guys. Let's have a look at you. So I'm get the heart rates up a little bit. Count in your own five and then straight into your five squats. Nice work. Count in your own five. When you've done your last five squats, I want you to roll down and hang down there like a rag doll. Great work, everyone. Nice big squat actions, pushing those hips back, reaching those arms overhead. That's it. And then finish with your roll down. Great work. Breathe. Nice work. Okay, from here, we're going to walk it out. We're going to walk our hands down the mat. We're going to come to a full plank position with the hands under the shoulders, body long like a plank, rest the knees to the floor so you're now in half plank, and untuck your toes. Scoop through the belly, scoop through the tail, and we're going to isolate the shoulder blades. So we're going to re retract and protract through the shoulder blades. Keep in nice straight arms. You let the shoulder blades dip through the upper back. And then exhale, press away the ground and broaden through the upper back. Keep your abdominals strong. You should be able to feel them there supporting you. Relax through your legs. Keep your bum engaged. And really try to isolate the movement of those shoulder blades, retracting and protracting. As you keep those arms nice and straight, hands nice and strong, pressing down through your fingertips into the ground. Good stuff. I'm going to keep you here for another 15 seconds. If anyone wants to progress it onto full plank, you can go for it. Nice. Keep the head aligned. And if we're taking those full planks, we really need to engage through those legs. Brilliant work. We've got another five. You're going to hold your plank of choice. Three, two, and one. Well done. Push ups. Inhale going down. Exhale, press away the ground to come back up. Good stuff. Now we're getting the heart rates up. We're warming up to our body still. We're going to go for another 25 seconds. I want big full range of movement and then go in as fast as you can without sacrificing your range of movement. You've got 20 seconds left on the clock. You've got full plank or half plank and really press away the ground as you push up. So you're slightly protracting through those shoulders like we were doing before when you press away the ground. Good work, everyone. You should start to feel the heart rate coming up. You've got another five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. Well done. Okay. Come into a four-point kneel position. Hands at the shoulders, knees at the hips. I want you to sway your body weight forward into your arms, back into your hips, swaying forward and back. And then find that middle position where your body weight is equal to your arms and your legs. Cow stretch, cat stretch. Inhale, slope the spine, look up. Exhale, scoop through the belly, round through your spine, drop your head and look through the legs. Inhale, cow stretch, extend the spine, looking above. Exhale, scoop through the belly, round through your spine, head drops to look down through the knee, push away the ground. One more time. Getting really nice spinal mobility. 
And then we want to find our neutral. Okay, so it's the right arm and it's the left leg. Okay, so let's start with the left leg. We're going to extend the left leg out long behind us as we go for swimming. And then we bend it back in underneath to hover over the ground. Exhale, extend it long. Inhale, bend it in. So as we're extending that leg long, we're keeping our nice neutral spine and we're keeping our body weight equally distributed between our legs and our arms. Abdominals are strong. This is a really good trunk stabilizer. And now the challenge, if you want to take it, is to start extending that opposite arm out as the leg extends out. Imagine you've got your morning coffee balanced on your back to start with. Exhaling as you reach through the limbs. Inhaling as you lower through the limbs. Pressing away the ground through that left arm, keeping that shoulder tucked down the back. Now, there's the option to add in that cow and cat stretch. So as you inhale, you're going to extend the arms, the legs, slope the spine, look up. As you exhale, you're going to pull your knee into your nose, your elbow into your knee, round your spine like an angry cat. Inhale, extend long. Exhale, scoop, round it like an angry cat. Nice. You need balance. We need control. Good. Taking your time. It's almost like you're moving through water, so we're creating our own resistance. Really trying to get the flexion and extension through your back. The abdominal control is really challenged. Squeezing the bum as the leg extends out behind you. We've got another 15 seconds. We'll hold the leg out. We'll find neutral and place that arm down, okay? Looking really strong, nice and controlled, everyone. Good stuff, Brooke. Well done, Rachel. Nice extension there, Rachel. You've got another three, two, neutral spine, arm down, and one. Neutral spine, arm down, but that leg stays out behind us. Good, just holding the leg up at the height of the hip, point the toe. Belly tight, arms nice and strong. We're gonna lift and lower the legs. So lower the legs to the foot taps on the floor, and then lift. Lower tap and lift. Tap the toes down and lift. Now it's really important the lifting action comes from the hip, comes from the bum, not from the lower back. So really tighten up the lower stomach, belly to spine, and squeeze the bum to lift the leg. That's where the initiation starts. Good, press away the ground, squeeze down through your armpits. We're going to have 20 seconds. Keep the leg nice and long, the toes nice and pointy. Feel stable in your lower back as it's the glutes and the hip that lift the leg. There shouldn't be any sloping or extending in the spine as the leg lifts. Neck is long, head is long. Nice and strong, you've got another six. You're going to hold that leg up. Five, four, three, to hold the leg of the hip height. Now flex the foot so it's square. Bend your knee at a 90 degree angle so the sole of the foot faces to the ceiling. Now holding your leg at that height, you're just gonna straighten your leg out and bend the knee foot up. Straighten and bend. So it's a hamstring curl. Now make sure we're not diving into our arms. Body weight is still equal between legs and arms. Squeeze your butt really tight to hold that leg up at the height of your hip. Good, just press and bend. Now as that leg straightens, I really want you to press out through the back of the leg, create your own resistance, squeeze your bum, it's like you're stamping your foot on the wall behind you. Great stuff. Let's go for another 20 seconds, take it steady, moving a little bit slower helps you create your own resistance. Really nice work everyone. Looking good. Make sure we're keeping the head up, lifting the belly. We're not sloping through that spine. Checking yourselves. You've got another five, four. We're going to hold the leg bent. Three, little pulses to the sky. Two, bend the knee, foot to the ceiling. Little pulses up, up. Focus on the up movement. Exhale on the up. Pressing that knee up, squeezing that booty. You've got another 15 seconds to pulse. Keep breathing. Check your alignment. Think about your head, your spine, your shoulders. Make sure you're not sloping and sinking, stay engaged. Six, five, four, three, two, 
and one. Amazing. Hands and knees down. Good stuff. And we're going to start, we're going to go into a side plank. So your right arm comes down underneath you. Okay. And we're going to come down into that forearm. We're going to start low. We're going to progress this exercise from onto our hands as well. So we're going to go start, start with a half side plank. So we're going to be on the elbow, elbow under shoulders, legs down straight underneath you, but your bottom leg is bent, your top leg is straight, and then you're a bit like a bicycle stab as you lift onto your bottom knee. And option, take the arm up towards the ceiling or hand to your hip. Now make sure your hips and your chest are facing straight ahead towards the wall in front of you. Try not to have any rotation towards the ground or towards the ceiling, and that arm can be up if you like. Now that top leg, we're just going to lift to hip level, and lower, flex the foot, lift, and lower. Press away the ground from underneath you with your forearm. Think about using your obliques on the lower side of your body, and then we're getting these lateral hip muscles, these lateral glute muscles to work with these leg lifts. Good, so nice and steady, just lifted the hip high, it does not have to go any higher. Brilliant, nice and steady, another 15. Squeeze the bum of the bottom hip. Open your chest and spine nice and long. Keep checking yourself. You've got another five. You've got to hold the leg up. We're going to come onto the hand. Four, three, two, and hold the leg up. Come up onto your hand. And we go for a bicycle. We're going to bend that knee, bend the elbow towards it, and then stretch out long. Bend up and stretch long. You can curl your spine as you bring your knee to your elbow. And then inhale, reach out nice and long, taking the arm overhead, the leg out long to the start to the, to the wall behind you. Nice work. Another 20 seconds. Keep pressing away the ground through the arm underneath. If you do want to come back onto your elbow, you can. I'm going to make everyone check that they've got their hand directly under their shoulder, not out in front of them. I want that nice alignment. Good. Brilliant. Last 10. We're going to finish with a hold. You're just going to wave that arm up and down the length of your body for another five, four, three, two. Hold it. Arm waves down to your pocket, overhead. Down to your hip, overhead. Just the last eight, seven. Six, lift through the obliques, obliques underneath you, lift that leg nice and high. Well done, you've got four, three, two, and one. Amazing stuff, that is a tough one, well done. Just stay with your legs to the side of you, to the side they were. On the hip, find a mermaid's leg, put the foot up to the thigh, take hold of that foot with your hand, and then arch over to stretch out the underside of the glutes that will just work. Reach out for your fingertips, lift out that waistline, face your arm, hit to the ceiling and face your chest forward. Good work, okay. Laying down onto your stomach, so laying down nice and prone. And we're gonna bring the elbows out to the side of your shoulders like cactus arms. So I'll just come up to my knees to show you, you want your arms, like this, up square at the side of you, but you're laying face down on the floor. Okay, squeeze your bum, push your pelvis into the ground, and keep that engagement. Engage your legs, they need to feel really energized, and reach out for your toes, eyes and forehead looking towards the ground. Now, as you inhale, you're gonna lift your chest, lift your forearms from the floor, keep your eyes looking towards the top of the mat. Squeeze your bum, push your pelvis into the ground. And then exhale, relax your body down. Inhale, lift your elbows, move at the side, pull back in your shoulder blades, let nice and long. And then exhale, lower down. That's all I want you to do. The legs are not moving, but the legs are strong. They are your anchor as you extend your spine, lifting your chest. Good. Let's just go for another three. We're going to add in some overhead pulls. Now, if anyone does want to add in the legs lifting as the arms and chest lifts, feel free. That's a bit more of an advanced movement. Otherwise, just keep them anchoring down on the ground. Okay, next time, everyone is going to lift, extend, and hold. You're going to reach the arms overhead. You're going to pull the elbows back down to the side, and then you're going to lower the body. Inhale, lift. 
Exhale, reach, pull, and inhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, reach. Inhale, pull. Exhale, lower. Four breath pattern. Really reach out through your fingertips. Create energy through your toes, through your legs. Move with control as you extend through the spine, strengthening all of your pelvic senses. Keep using your glutes to help you press your pelvis into the ground. I'm going to keep you going here. If this gets too much, you don't have to do the overarm, overhead reach. The legs are optional as well. So there's a few different variations that you can play with here for whatever works best for you. Let's go for number 15. Looking really strong. Well done, Olivia. Great work, Becky. Nice. We're going number five. Four, we're going to hold it. Three, two, lift and hold. Just do those arms. Reach and pull. Reach and pull. Make it quite vigorous. Put a bit of energy into it. We've got another six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Relax. Well done. As you lay down, just shake your booty from left to right. It will help to release your lower back. And we're going to come back into all four positions to do that little sequence on the other side that we did with the swimming. So come back to all fours. Again, start to shift your body weight forward into your arms, back into your legs and find that equal distribution of weight. And then once you've got that position, you hold four point kneel, go with some cow stretch. Cat stretch, especially the cat stretch, it's going to feel nice after that extension work. And then find that neutral. So this time it's going to be your right leg that starts the action. So create stability through your trunk. As you exhale, you lift that right leg out along behind. You inhale and you bring it down underneath you. The leg is always in motion. It doesn't actually rest on the ground. And remember, you're using your glutes. Belly is tight. Squeezing down through the armpit. Slightly contraction in the upper body and the shoulders. And then once you're ready, we start doing those opposite arm with the leg. Inhale to reach, exhale to, to lower. For number three, the cow and cats are going to join the party. Two and one. We can extend as we reach the limbs and flex as we pull the knee and elbow underneath us. Really create length through your body, reach out through your fingertips, reach out through your toes, feel long as your body moves. Brilliant, nice control of your spine, nice balance in your pelvis. Trying to create symmetry across the body. We've got another 20 seconds here before we hold the neutral spine. Leg stays up, arm goes down. Seeing some really great movement here. Well done, Casey. Brilliant, Georgia. We've got another five, four, three, two. Find your neutral. The leg goes long, the hand goes down. Squeeze down, pack your shoulders down the back, point the toe. Lower the leg, tap the toe on the floor. Use your glutes to lift the leg back up to hip height. Really trying to create stability in that lower back, tight through your abdominals. Fantastic, well done. Make sure you tap the floor before you lift. It's almost like you get an electric shock off that floor and then you lift, lift. Making sure that we're not diving into the arms. Go for number five. Four, we're going to hold the leg up, flex the foot, go to our hamstring curls. Two and one. Hold it up. Now really focus on using the glutes. Flex the foot, bend the knee, and then we create our own resistance. As you exhale, press out through the back of the leg as it extends. Inhale, bend. Keeping the knee up at hip height. Stay nice and strong through the upper body and torso. Press long, bend in. 
those hamstrings nice and active. Another 25 seconds on the clock. Try and keep those knees up. Preventing your lower back from over sloping. Just a natural curvature there. 15. <laughs> There's a dog getting involved here. Oh, we've got his cuddly toy. He wants to play. <laughs> okay, let's go for number five. We're going to hold the knee bent. We're going to pulse the foot to the ceiling. In three, two, you've got it, you've got it. And one, hold it bent, pulse. Focus on the up movement. Exhale on the up. Keep your belly tight. Make sure your head is not dropping. Long for your neck. Stay strong, stay focused. You've got another eight, seven, six. We've got that side plank work again. Five, four, three, two, and one. Brilliant work. Nice. Okay, take a breather. For our side plank, it's gonna be your left arm that's under you. So you could just rotate, take your head to the other end of the mat if you like, so you're still facing the camera. Left arm needs to be underneath you. Okay, so come down as your forearm. Make sure that elbow is directly under your shoulder. Make that bicycle stand position through your legs. The bottom knee aligns with the elbow. Squeeze your bone, press your pelvis forward and make sure your chest and hips are facing forward. That arm going up to the sky is optional again. And we're gonna point, the, we're gonna flex the foot as we exhale, lift the top leg and then tap it down, lift and tap. So it's just those leg taps like we do when we're four point kneel, but on the side, it's that lovely glute mid muscle working as well. Keep reaching your fingers towards the ceiling if you've got that arm up, pressing away the ground underneath and you're gonna get those obliques working on the underside of your body. Never holding the breath in these kind of actions, in these kind of exercises. Always trying to get it circulating through you. Big inhalation through your nose. Long exhalations through your mouth. You've got number five. We're going to come to the hand. Four. Three. We've got those bicycles. Two. And one. Come up onto your hand and make sure that hand is directly under your shoulder. Do a double take. Arm up, leg up. We bend the elbow to the knee. And we extend out nice and long. Really reach and create length. Bend on the exhale, crunch the body, and then inhale, extend nice and long and open yourself up. You're going to use the glutes on that supporting leg. Good. You're going to change your obliques. You're going to get the heart rate coming up a little bit. The lateral hip muscles are given challenge. Fantastic, fantastic, guys. You can curl your spine, flex it to bend in through the knee and elbow, and then get length as you extend long on that inhale. You've got another eight, seven, 16. Some really nice, strong lines through the body. Well done, Phoebe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. Brilliant. Awesome work. Okay, laying down on your back, knees bent, feet flat to the floor. Let's continue with some abdominals and then get into some bridges. Okay, so have your feet quite, quite close to your bum. Fingertips are gonna to come to your temples and we're gonna do an, a, um, a classic um, abdominal curl up or chest lift. Keep the elbows nice and wide. I want you to exhale and lift your head, chest and shoulders, keeping the neck relaxed, elbows pinned wide, inhale, curl back. Now, if you struggle with having quite a bit of kyphosis in the upper body, you can have the arms reaching at the side of you, palms up. So every time you lift the chest, you're reaching your fingertips towards your feet, towards the end of the mat, and keeping your chest nice and open. Now, I want you to tuck the tail between the legs and so scoop your bum up underneath you. And now every time you curl up, I want you to bring one knee up at the same time, bringing that knee towards your forehead, towards your nose. Inhale, lay back. Exhale, curl back. Lay up, curl up. Try and keep a little tuck in your pelvis. You know, nice. Deep flexion as you come up, keeping that neck nice and relaxed. Go for another 20 seconds on these. Mm. 
Nice work, everyone. We've got another five, four. We're going to take it to bridges. Three, two, and one. Laying back. Arms come down at the side. Position your feet like train tracks. And bring your, um, your right leg into a tabletop position. We're going to do a single leg bridge. So wiggle your toes so you can press into your heels. As you press your heels, you scoop your tail. You press your hips up and come into a single leg bridge. And then inhale, curl your spine down and relax to the floor. Exhale, scoop through the tail, press up. Really focus on using the bum on that left leg. And then roll yourself down. Arms can come up to the sky as, a, as an advancement. Left surface area for you to balance on. Otherwise, you keep them down at your side. Nice. Now that tabletop leg needs to stay nice and still. Swinging it is a little bit of a cheat to help you create momentum to lift yourself. So the stiller it is, the more you have to focus on that bridging leg. As an add a bit of tempo. So you're gonna press up quick, slowly roll yourself down. Up quick, slowly down. So really trying to get those glutes to activate as you do that quick upward thrust. And then down. We're gonna do 20 seconds on this one. We're going to hold it for a final challenge. Nice work, everyone. Another 10. Try and go up quick. Put the brakes on to roll down. Five, four, three, two, up and hold. Straighten out that right leg and we wave it down to the left leg, up to the ceiling, down. And up, so again, nice dynamic hamstring stretch on that right leg. Really having to stabilize is with that isometric contraction through the left leg. Hamstrings, calves, glutes, all working. And we're looking to keep the pelvis nice and level. Make sure that right side has not dropped. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower your body, switch your legs. Right foot down, left leg tabletop, straight into those single leg bridges. Even steady pace to start with. Focus on the tuck of the pelvis, the roll of the spine, the activation of the glutes. Nice one. This is a great exercise for helping you to create some body awareness as well, improve your body awareness to get those glutes firing up a bit better for some of us. Nice work, Matilda. Good work, Kerry. Well done, you look nice and controlled there. Okay, let's start to add that tempo. Up quick, down slow. Thrust it up, control it on the way down. Another 20 seconds. There's quite a few dogs getting involved. Rachel, there's your little dog. Is that a staffy? <laughs> okay, let's go for another five. Four, we're gonna up and hold, wave that leg. Three, two, and hold it. Really get strong through that right side, extend the left and start to wave. The wave should be smooth. Try not to throw your leg to force any range of movement that's not coming naturally. Find, feel that nice dynamic stretch in those hamstrings. Keep pressing up your hips and keeping them level. Keep challenging that right side. You've got another eight, seven. Good work, Callum. Nice flexibility there. Five, Four, three, two, both feet down, both hips up, hold your bridge and little pulses. Scoop your tail, finishing with 30 seconds of hip pulses. Nice, legs like train tracks, toes point straight ahead, knees point straight ahead. Try not to have them turned out too much. Well done, Rachel, make sure your feet are nice and aligned like train tracks. Looking really strong, everyone. Great work, Casey. Another 10 seconds, scooping the tail, five, four, three, 
to and release your body down. Full body stretch, taking your arms overhead, stretching your legs nice and long. Breathe. We're gonna finish with a Pilates roller. Okay, so if you need to bend your knees for this one, you can. Big breath in through the nose. As you exhale, you're gonna tuck the chin, start to lift the arms up from behind you. Keep breathing in and out as you curl up through the upper body. Use your abdominals to sit you up nice and tall. Sit in tall, reach your arms overhead, fingertips to the ceiling. Sit nice and tall in your sit bones. Big breath in, and as you exhale, fold yourself forward, hang your head, hands reach for your feet, and breathe. A little softness in the knees is good here. Five, feel that nice stretch through your posterior chain. Three, two, and one. Well done, good work. We're gonna to come to standing, so you can bend your knees, come into a crouching position, and we finish how we started with, with the roll-up. So coming into a crouching position, you're going to drop your head, lift your hip, belly tight, roll your spine, come in tall, inhale, reach the arms up above, and you are finished. Amazing work, everyone. Awesome stuff. Gather yourself, grab some water, shake yourselves off. And you feel free to take yourself off mute. Thanks, Amy. My glutes are on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised how much they need more work when I was. That was amazing, Amy. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope everyone's awake <laughs> now. I certainly am. Um, that was fabulous. Thank you so much, Amy. We yeah, definitely really appreciate that. My little dog's just come to say hello. hello. Oh, beautiful. So she literally just weighed two kilos. She's very much the opposite to the bird of poodle thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little Yorkshire Terry, yeah. Oh. She likes it when I do bridges because she gets the jump on my chest and then she's yeah. like, oh, mum's on the floor. Let's lay on her. <laughs> Which is my favourite exercise, hey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so cute. Oh, darling. <laughs> well, I guess... I don't know we'll find that. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Oh, no. Yeah. How, how did everybody go in the class? Definitely wiped me up. Yay! <laughs> That's good. That was hard. Oh. Well, wonderful, guys. I guess, yeah, we'll launch into now a bit of a um, Q&A on KX. Um, and Amy will talk through kind of, yeah, recruitment, how it all works, um, and then the training opportunities through KX. So, yeah, over to you, Amy, again. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so KX, as I said before, we are a franchise chain and we've got 75 studios in Australia at the moment, um, growing every month. COVID has slowed that down a little bit, but still we are growing, growing still as a company, which is really positive. Um, so it does mean we have opportunities across the whole, whole network. And because of our size as well, we also have a lot of career opportunities within um, the network as well, which is, is unique to KX. Um, because, because of our size, right? So a lot of Pilates studios tend to be more um, privately owned single studios or maybe like three, four studios. Um, but the network, network still has a limited capacity for careers for trainers when they're, when they're that small. So within KX, we have um, two career path, main career path opportunities, I suppose. One is um, the trainer, the tutor, education, um, within the training department, which a lot of people are interested in. Um, and second to that is also the opportunity of owning your own studio um, at, as a franchisee. Um, so they're the two main ones. Um, from a trainer point of view, because I work in my role in my department, I work a lot on the education, but also creating consistency throughout the network once trainers are graduated and working within studios. So we have a lot of different roles that help me accomplish that or help me manage that system. Um, we have um, shadow mentors, which are when the students are doing their KX Academy and they um, go into and they have a shadow mentor with them through their academies to help them learn, learn the sequences, learn the ways of teaching for KX. 
We have what we call QCs, um, which are quality controllers, basically. They help us do assessments for the trainer network. We have academy tutors, head trainer roles within studios, which help with in-studio development, social media, and kind of creating that community that we have within our studios. Um, and then we have state training manager roles as well, where you are the, the um, expert of your state, who's the point of contact for all of your studio, for all of the studios in that state as well. And then obviously you have me as well as the head of training who kind of overlooks and coordinates and navigates and develops all that as well. So, so in a nutshell, that's what we do when you're, uh, that's what the kind of career pathway can be within, within KX for a trainer. Um, all trainers enter KX by doing our KX Academy. Um, there are fast track options to it, um, but it is a compulsory um, academy that you do to work for us to learn the KX method, the KX style of teaching, um, and to start with that point of consistency that we're looking for as a, as a chain of studios all across the country. That's an end six week, a six week intense course um again again and the um, prerequisites to come onto that is a minimum of a cert four um in a relevant fitness in, in a relevant fitness qualification um and we work really closely with unite health with that with the um uh, pilates pilates instructor course that unite health has a lot of people come from that to do the kx academy to start working for us um, that's actually done through a sponsorship agreement. It's not something that you guys were expected to pay for. Um, it is a sponsorship agreement which you enter um, to do um, to then do that to become an employee with us. Um, and it's also certified by Fitness Australia. Um, so yeah, that that um, and to get onto that course, um, to get onto that course, you do have to be kind of recruited by a studio. So the key ways um, for anyone who is interested in working for us as a trainer, um, two key ways is we do have a recruitment email and you can um, access that through our website or it's just recruitment at kx.com.au. You can also just approach your local studios um, directly as well and speak to them directly because they're all franchise owners. Um, who, um, who's, who's, in, who's from Victoria here? Who's from SA? Who's from New South Wales? You're a bit all over. Yeah, is anyone here from WA as well? Or we've got any WA people? The, the WA group, Amy, will be joining on Saturday. So mostly WA Queensland and SA will be Saturday. Oh, okay. So most people here now are New South Wales or Victoria? Victoria. Victoria. Okay. So we're all in lockdown. That's fine. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so um, they're the two ways to apply to be a trainer. Um, going either directly to the, the studio itself or go through the recruitment email, which you can find a link to as well on, on our website. Thank you, Sarah. That's good. Um, any questions on anything you want to, anyone want me to go into anything on more, in more detail with that? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. yep. Um, I just wanted to know a little bit more about the academy. Like, how long is it? Um, do you do it in like uh, three weeks succession, four weeks succession, or is it like day release? Like, how does how does it work? Yeah, yeah. Good question. It's a six week academy from start to finish, um, and that includes the shadow teaching hours that you would need to do as well. So it is six weeks to graduation, um, and we start one and finish one every six weeks, basically. Um, it's, a, it's a mixture of online learning um, for all of our teaching theories um, that we cover, but then it's also face-to-face um, -face practical workshops as well. Um, there's um, four online seminars and six face-to-face -face workshops that you do within that six-week period, as well as um, shadow teaching as well within, your home, within the studios that have hired you to work for them or sponsored you to work for them. How many hours would that be, Amy, from kind of, yeah? The, yeah the it works out to be about 60 hours. Okay. Yeah, it's probably about 10 hours a week. Yep. Um, yeah. 
there are there is homework there are assessments um some of the assessments are just theory and they're online they're very easy kind of tick box multiple choice um and then to graduate there's also a final practical assessment which is you teaching a small group of people um generally nowadays with covid it's recorded and sent to me or the group of my assessors um for us to watch kind of via recording and 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 mark remotely um, in Victoria, sometimes there are quite a few of us, so we will come to you face to face. Um, however, that just gets increasingly harder to do with COVID and, and the expansion of the network. So most of that's done remotely as well. Does that answer your questions, Leanne? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Cool. And sorry, Amy, just another question. With those kind of 60 hours, the shadow teaching is included in that 60 hours. Uh, no, the shadow teaching is on top of that. So sorry, including the shadow teaching would be 80 hours within the six week period. Great. And, and people, yeah, within the six week period, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, and like I said, that's done through a sponsorship agreement um, with you in the studio who, who you'll be hired by. Um, so it's not of a, a cost to you. To, to work for us, but it is something that we ask for you to do because it is so important that you teach um, according to the KX way, the KX method um, and KX standards. Has anyone here been to a KX class before? Yeah, Libby has. Oh, quite a few of you have. Oh, cool. <laughs> and I see you smiling, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Becky, which one do you go to? Um, I go to KX Mossman. Mossman, oh, nice. Do you know Paul there and Lucy? Um, yeah, yeah. I only get to, um, my current work schedule is quite busy, so I only get to go to a couple of classes, but yeah, I love Lucy's classes. Um, and Paul, when he was up here. Yeah, he's moved cool. back to Melbourne now. Yeah. And Elise as well is yeah. there, although she's on maternity leave at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I do have a question about, um, so like, with like, if you do get sponsored, um, and in terms of like employment contracts and, and things, do you work um, only at like a KX studio? Like if you were working at a, a different brand as well, is that like a conflict of interest? Um, we see it as a conflict of interest if, it's literally, if that studio is literally down the road to us and they are also um, teaching dynamic Pilates, if it's exactly the same. Um, if... Um, the the main thing for us is that with the KX kind of method and way that we teach you within academy is something that you keep to KX as best as you can and that your learnings that you have from Unite Health and other backgrounds and other qualifications is what you take to the other studios that you work at. Um, mm -hmm. It is always yeah, subjective. Okay, cool. It is always subjective. Um, you are casual employees though, so we definitely don't stop you from working anywhere else. It's more about just um, asking, it's more about making sure that the clients we have, the client base that we have at our studios stay loyal to, to us and our, and, our, um, and our studios and that we don't, you know, it's the whole thing of clients moving to follow a train or something like that, which is very difficult. Um, such a competitive world and a competitive market. But um, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You. That's that's helpful. I just um, I'm looking to have a big career change to trying to like make sure I navigate that space really well. Yeah, yeah, so and it's you. it's not about stopping you from doing it. It's just about like having the conversations around that. That's what that's what you're doing, and um, you know, having that um, transparency around it as well. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's not something that you're stopped from doing. Thanks, so Amy. Amy thank you. A good question might be, so once you've done the KX Academy, how many hours do you get in for like casual employment at, and what's kind of your pay rates? Because I know there's a few different structures um, once you first start. Yeah, so it is casual employment. Um, like with every job as well, there's the option of going part-time, permanent part-time after, um, after a year, especially if you do have permanent shifts during that year. Um, when it comes to how many classes you teach, it is negotiable between you and that studio owner when you when you are recruited and when you're interviewed. You know, they have needs for their studio of how many hours or what or which shifts in particular they they need covering and they need and they need someone to take on a permanent basis. 
Um, but then it's obviously your availability and how you best match that too. So some trainers work uh, one shift a week and we classify a shift as four classes back to back. Um, some classes, some trainers teach 20, 25 hours a week, which is like four or five shifts a week. Um, it really does vary um, because of the casual nature of the work. Um, and then in addition to that as well, within each state, we have um, a covers, a shift covers network and system. So it's very easy as well to see that, oh, you know, I work at KX Mossman, for example, but KX Crow's Nest um, um, needs cover on Friday morning and cool, you can put your name down for that and you can go and do that as well. So you have home studios, which are your, um, which are your base, which is where you spend most of your time, but then the ability to move around and cover and support other studios within the KX network is, um, is um, something that you're able to do as well. And something that a lot of the trainers love that flexibility because they get to, um, they get to have a base level of classes and then when they've got time to do more they can if they don't want to do as much they, they don't have to and they also get a variety in the studios they teach in as well and a variety of the different people and clients that you can come across so um, it's always seen as a positive in the KX network. Um, we have different pay grades throughout throughout your career with KX um, as you gain gain of experience. And to be honest, actually, they are currently being revised. They're going to be revised from September. Um, but your starting rate, and all these rates are also plus super, by the way. But your starting rate starts at thirty five dollars. Um, that is actually going up um, in the next couple of months. It should be going up to thirty eight. Um, and then from there, it's an extra, we, we do um, assessments with you to gauge your, your progression, to gauge where you're going and to give you feedback on how you are. Um, and with each of those official assessments, you'll get a pay rise. Um, and there's a 100 class assessment and there's a 12 month assessment. And then you can have a master trainer assessment as well if you qualify for that. And they all go up um, by $5 mark each time you get, each time you pass one of those assessments. So because we are a franchise network, different franchisees do incentivize their long-standing team members with different salaries, with different hourly rates. Um, but we obviously have standard, standard franchise rates, but then they can be individualized as well at different studios, different studio owners, as you start to work for them for 18 months, two years, three years. We have trained, I've been with the company for 10 and a half years, but we've got trainers who have been with us for seven, eight, nine years, um, nearly as long as me. Um, so we do have um, um, a lot of trainers who love working for the network and and stay with us for for you know for their career. So which is really nice. Especially I think that's also comes down especially because there is opportunity with like I said the training department opportunities. Also working in studio management as well, and then also progressing into franchise ownership too. So. Um, it's really nice because it creates a really great community within the network and a lot of people know each other like even like with them with Mossman like Becky talk about Mossman I know all the trainers there and there's 450 trainers in our network and it is because I know a lot of the trainers and I make it my job to know the trainers but it's also because all those trainers at that studio love it and they've been there for donkey's years like they've all been there at least Lucy since the day that studio opened which is like probably six years ago um so it really is like a big family as well, working for KX, because we do have a lot of long standing team members, which is really, really a nice, it's a nice environment to be in because the fitness industry can classically be quite transient. So. And, a lot and Amy, can I just add oh, sorry. something oh. really good about that as well, just my little advice is that if you are going to a KX and you do love the community there, you know, that's when you can start to let them know that you're doing your Unite Health training and that you'd be interested in going, going to the academy and usually once you just let them know then they will start to um, perhaps remember you and put you forward for the academy so start now if you want to go to KX um, classes and go go in there and see if you like the feel of the space and picture yourself working there um, now's sort of the time to let them know really yeah absolutely Phoebe's spot on yeah start going to the classes get your face known go and say hello to the studio owner or the studio managers and start to like build those build those bridges build those relationships 
And what would be the easiest way, Amy, say if you're going to your local studio to find out who owns the studio or if it's um, KX has some company owned studios as well. So how would, yeah, what's the best way for people to find out who's the best point of contact to the studio? Yeah, so by going into the studio and just asking the trainers who you who are teaching the classes, um, they'll obviously point they'll point you in the right direction with that. A lot of the studios um, do have studio managers there who are there during the day and reception desks and everything. So if you are there during the days doing classes, there'll generally be someone there, the owner themselves. A lot of the studios are, are actually ran by the owners. A lot of the studios um, don't have studio managers. Some do, some don't, some do both. Um, some studio owners actually have multiple studios. One of our studio owners has eight studios. So she has studio managers, area managers, and again, another career opportunity as well for people who, for studio owners who own a group within the franchise group. Um, so you'll find it just by going into your studios and get connected that way. Um, otherwise as well, um, the email address for every KX studio is very easy. It's the name of the suburb, e.g. Pran, at kx.com.au um, but you can also do it through the website using that recruitment email address and we'll point you in the right direction and give you the contacts that you need Wonderful. i have a question just to do with um recruitment and the academy and covid clearly um sydney and new south wales is in lockdown and it's not looking like we're going to be getting out anytime soon how is the academy and kind of recruitment processes working at the moment because because clearly none of the new south wales or sydney studios are open um how has that kind of changed the business model and what will it kind of be looking like moving forward um good question um, so recruitment's still happening at a studio level. Um, you know, these the we still don't know how long that lockdown will be, but sending in your resumes to those studio owners, going through interview processes online via Zoom is still a really valuable thing to do um, because they will need staff still, they will need trainers working for them. Um, we have a couple of academies going in New South Wales at the moment, which were in progress prior to the lockdown happening. So we are continuing with those and they've all had reformers delivered to their houses and we do it all remotely with them. We delivered the studio, the, the reformers from the studios for them. Um, a brand new academy starting up, they, actually, they are postponed at the moment and it's postponed until, um, until further notice um, with New South Wales coming out of that lockdown. Um, but then as soon as we can, we will start up the academies again. They might be ran initially more intense where we try and do it in four weeks instead of six weeks. It would still be the net same volume, but we would do it more intense. Um, and that will be, that's pending according to when we think the borders will start to open and we'll start doing the online stuff as much as we can ready for all the face to face work. So not border studios. We'll start doing the online stuff as, as soon as we can, um, ready for the face-to-face -face work when the doors do open so that we can still get you up and running um, as soon as we're able to. Um, but because we are, um, it is postponed at the moment, there's still a lot of value in you sending your resumes, having phone calls, having Zoom conversations with the studio owners, getting your face in front of them. Um, and, you know, you can be in the um, you can, they can still, if they still choose to, um, to sponsor you and to, and to go through the recruitment process with you, they can still do that, but you will be, uh, waiting for the academy to start. Yeah. Cause we, we, we just don't know when the studios will open again. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. They will eventually though. <laughs> until that, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, right? They will eventually. <laughs> so we still keep things moving as, as much as we can. <laughs> yeah. I think coming from Victoria, we know. I think, yeah, we've kind of got used to the stop start of it all, like most people around Australia. So please rest assured, things will eventually get back to normal. <laughs> yeah, it is a waiting game and it's a challenging waiting game, but it will happen. Um, just jumping back to the academy quickly with the 10 hours per week, how many of them are face to face and are they mostly on weekends for people who work full time or have uni commitments and such, or are they throughout the week? Trying to see who's ah uh, Jen, sorry. Jen. Oh, there we go. Um, sorry, say that again. I was too busy trying to look for who was talking uh. to me on the screen. So um, with the ten hours per week, the face-to-face -face component is that mostly run on weekends or is it throughout the week? Just for people that work during the week or have study commitments and things like that. 
Yeah, no, a lot of it's run on, a lot of the online seminars are either run early morning or evenings and they're recorded as well so you can catch up with them. And then the face-to-face the face -to -face workshops are generally done on the weekends. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. we do mix it up weekends and weeks, but generally they're done on the weekends. Awesome. Other questions from anyone? Well, actually, one good question we do get asked quite regularly is um, you're currently going through your course. Can you start the KX Academy? Um, and it's my understanding, Amy, yes, if you're nearing towards the end of your course, absolutely, because we've had students do it. Yeah, if you're nearing towards the end of your course, you can. However, you do need to have qualified from the Unite Health course before the last day of the KX Academy finishing. You can't graduate from the KX Academy if you don't have the prerequisites in the bank, if, that, if you see what that means. So if you're so because it's a six week course, you need to know that you're going to have graduated and finalised everything with Unite Health and get that and got that certificate prior to the graduation of the KX Academy. Yeah, unless you have a cert for already. Yes, yes, Tash. Yeah, yeah. Then that then that's irrelevant. Yeah, it's just if, if the Unite Health course is the first first course that the first qualification that you're that you're doing as in the fitness industry, then you'll need that. Um, um, completed but yeah if you already have a cert for in personal training or that we have a lot of dancers who work for us a cert for or diplomas in dance then that would stand as your prerequisite anyway yeah and sorry amy can that cert for also be in the allied health field or does it have to be in a fitness field as well no, it can be in health yeah allied health like physio osteos or that kind of stuff we do have those uh, though uh, yeah we do accept those as well yeah Any other questions? She's back. Oh, <laughs> um, I guess I think the really key valuable points that Amy and both Phoebe have said is that if you love KX, definitely get chatting to kind of those studio owners um, and studio managers now. Um, it's such a, I go to KX twice a week. I love it. Um, it's such a, everyone who works there, we've had so many students go on to kind of start working there. And this is such a, the six week academy, once you've done your night health training to then go into the six weeks academy, it just sets you up um, for your Pilates career. And I always love when we get to chat with Amy or anyone at KX, because prior to, to these conversations, I never realized all the amazing career opportunities you could go with it, that you could be a studio manager, um, a national state training manager. So it's really, really nice to see kind of from when I started teaching Pilates 20 plus years ago now, <laughs> how much the, it, the landscape's really changed. And this really can be such an amazing career, um, especially if you're looking to move away from kind of your, if you're in corporate or your current industry, you really can make this an amazing um, career for yourself, either part-time or full-time. And it's, it's just really exciting to see that these opportunities are out there now. So um, definitely, definitely get in touch kind of with the studio owners. If, if you already know KX and love KX, if you haven't experienced it, definitely get, um, get in and have a go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jump into classes, have a go, get your name out there, say hi and just start networking with your local studios um, and your studio owners and the trainers there. Ask the trainers what it's like to work for KX as well. If you want to talk to them more, um, most of them are very happy to talk, talk about, you know, we're all fitness professionals. We all love the chat, right? So they're very happy to chat most of the time. Um, but yeah, talk to the studio, the studio trainers that you go to as well and get their opinion and ask them, um, ask them, you know, what it's like to be a day in the life of a KX trainer. And um, I know they'll all be really happy to chat and share their stories with you as well. Wonderful. Any last minute questions from anyone today? Um, I did have one in terms of like preparing yourself for like you know, sending in your resume um, or potentially having like Zoom interviews and stuff. What are like the sort of key aspects of a role that a studio owner is going to be looking for in an instructor? Yeah, great question, that one. Um, 
but the qualifications and the cert for the the prerequisites is obviously the number one customer service is a huge thing for us we really pride ourselves on the client experience we create and that comes from you know the the kind of person you are and your personality as well as any experience that we do that as well as experience that you might have in client one-to-one kind of client service roles customer service roles and some of our trainers come from like retail backgrounds and stuff like that and um and they're very much um you know, client centric, which is what we pride ourselves on being as well. So highlighting all your transferable skills when it comes to communication skills, organization skills, um, um, ability to talk in front of a room of people, um, how personable you can be, the understanding of communities, understanding of how small businesses run, if you understand that kind of side of things, if you do come from those kind of backgrounds, they're all transferable skills, which, which, which come across really well within the studios and with trainers. Um, but it's also with everything that we do in life, it's not always just what we do, it's how we do it, how we present ourselves in it. Um, and KX as well, we do, we love high energy, we love fun, we love the clients to walk out feeling a bit sweaty and like they've had a great time, that they found it really worth their time and investment um, as a choice of fitness. So that you can bring that kind of stage presence to your classes um, is something that we look for. It's so something that you should definitely try and pitch, pitch in your resumes, pitch in your covering letters as well. We all know what it's like, right? The trainer, we, when we go to a group exercise class of any type, it could be a yoga class, a spin class, a boot camp class. Like the exercises are great. We go because we do love the exercise, but what makes it the best class that you can ever, that it can be, that makes you just smile and want to go back again is generally the trainer. The trainer's care factor, the trainer's personability, the trainer's smile, the trainer's jokes and that kind of stage presence as well of the trainers. So we definitely look for that as well within with um, the people we recruit. Last chance, any more questions, everyone? Well, I just want to say a huge thank you to Amy um, and to obviously everyone here on either the course today or people who have been um, previously done the course or are currently going through the course. Um, Welcome, Becky. We, we really appreciate it, Amy. Um, and I can, yeah, assure you, if you do kind of apply to KX, it is a fantastic company um, to work with. So, yeah, we, we hope to see some of your faces, yeah, down the track at, at the studios. Um, for those who are on the course today, um, we're just going to finish this recording um, and you'll continue on just with Phoebe. Um, mm -hmm. For those who have just jumped in for the session today, great to see 